In this video, I want to talk with you about lifting hands and also what are holy hands. These questions came about for me because I've lifted up my physical hands and I've felt nothing. Like I don't feel any more closer to God when I lift up my hands as I'm praying. I don't feel affirmation from God whatsoever. It's just dead. And I'm just wondering why it is that I see so many people doing this in counterfeit Christianity. Why is that such a thing with people raising their hands? And so the first thing I want to say to you is if you're doing something that counterfeit Christianity has taught you to do, like plead the blood of Jesus or scream out the name of Jesus and nothing's happening, then you should be asking the question, like, is this something I should be doing? Why am I doing this? Is this what God meant? So the first question I want to ask you is why has God said to worship in the spirit and in truth? Does it limit our prayer if we don't lift our hands? And as I'm telling you, I personally feel nothing at the lifting up of my hands. It's just really, it's a distraction for me from the heart and spirit and from the reverence and focus in what is not seen or is not flesh. So it's almost like I'm reaching for something that I'm thinking in my head is flesh. Like, am I going to now reach for God and then he's going to reach back? Is he really up there in the sky? What am I reaching for if God is in my heart? Now, in Second Chronicles chapter 7, actually, I think it was in chapter 6, but several times in the Bible, it is mentioned that people would pray towards the temple. Why did they pray towards the temple? Because God's spirit was understood to be in the temple. That's where his presence was understood to be. And so if that's where his presence was understood to be, or people understood that his presence was in heaven and not inside of them because the spirit hadn't been given yet, then yeah, they were going to face the temple or lift their hands up toward heaven. And so you see several times in the word that they prayed with outstretched hands or lifting their hands. And so you see in 1 Kings 8, 54, now as Solomon finished offering all, his, all this prayer and plea to the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord where he had knelt with hands outstretched towards heaven. Why was he doing that towards heaven? Well, because he was praying to dedicate the temple and God had not said yet that his spirit, that he had chosen this temple for his dwelling. And so his spirit would have been in heaven. Once he said, okay, I've chosen this place as a temple for my dwelling, then Solomon could pray towards the temple. And so again, you see in Psalm 88, 9, every day I call upon you, O Lord, I spread out my hands to you. And again, in Psalm 119, 48, I will lift up my hands toward your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Again, in Psalm 134, 2, lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. And then you see that those who had the spirit, because actually people in the Old Testament, the prophets, had the spirit of God. And you see that those who had the spirit of God would lift up their hands toward the people and bless them. And then in the New Testament, you see that people who had the spirit of God would lay hands on those who did not, or those who needed healing, etc. So in the Old Testament, in Leviticus 9.22, then Aaron lifted his hands toward the people and blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offering, he stepped down. Then in Nehemiah 8.6, remember we're still in the Old Testament, Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Again, Psalm 28.2, hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help as I lift my hands toward your holy place. Again, focused on the holy place, reaching for him. Psalm 63.4, I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. Now that doesn't necessarily have to mean physically lift up your hands because when he says in your name I will lift up my hands, in this particular context he could be talking about deeds. In your name, I will lift up my hands. Psalm 134, 2, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and praise the Lord. Psalm 141, 2, may my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Now here, I wonder how is the evening sacrifice like the lifting up of your hands or vice versa? How is the lifting up of your hands like the evening sacrifice? 
And so what I think of, what I understand here with the heart of God is that the lifting up of spiritual hands has to do with deeds, has to do with what you're doing in your heart, that you are lifting up all of your deeds to God. And then in Lamentations 3.41, it says, let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven. So that is very similar to what I was describing here in Psalm 141.2. In the New Testament, there's really no mention of lifting up our hands at all. And we know that in the New Testament, that what has happened is that there's a shift because God's presence is in you. He has removed your heart of stone, placed in you a heart of flesh, a softened heart, and he begins to move you to follow his laws and keep his decrees. He places his spirit in your heart. We know that from Ezekiel 11 and also from Ezekiel 36. There's one mention in 1 Timothy 2, 8, where Paul says, Therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. Well, that's an interesting context. And it seems that most people interpret this to be like you're lifting up holy hands. I've even heard this in songs like lifting holy, lifting up holy hands in worship. So everyone raises their hands while the person is singing those lyrics. But here's the thing. What is Paul saying? I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. There's a context he's addressing right here. It's not lifting up holy hands because that's the way that you pray. Otherwise, why would he say without anger or disputing? So that what is supposed to be in your hands, in your deeds, is supposed to be holy. When you lift your hands, there should be holiness coming out of your hands, out of your deeds. Lift up holy hands without anger or disputing. If you lift your hand in anger or disputing, something else is coming out of your hands. There is a different kind of behavior that is not being done in a spirit of holiness, but rather in a spirit of anger and disputing. And he goes on to say, I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds. So again, he's addressing deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. That is the context of how that's being used right there. And also the fulfillment of a representation of what was being done in the Old Testament. Now, how else are hands being used in the New Testament? In the New Testament, hands were placed on people for the receiving of the Holy Spirit. Hands were placed on people for healing. Hands were placed on people to receive gifts from the Holy Spirit. And also in Luke 24, 50, when Jesus had led them to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. Same kind of context that we saw with Aaron when he lifted up his hands. Aaron, having the spirit, lifted up his hands and blessed. I don't want you guys to get too tripped up with what's going on with your hands. I just don't want, I, you know, in previous videos, I've addressed this issue of people putting their hands flat against each other, flat against each other in a, a prayer position. That is the way that people in the occult or Hinduism, that's the way that they pray. That does not come from Christianity, and but it's depicted in images of saints and of Jesus in the Harlot Catholic Church, in the occult. So I would advise against doing that. Don't do that. Don't go to yoga. Don't do these things because these are pagan practices lifted up to false gods. And though false gods are nothing, you should not be using occult practices to worship God or to pray to him. You should not have anything to do with people who are doing that. And what I'm saying is that there is no command in scripture regarding what you should be doing with your hands. So to think that when you sit down to pray that your hands should be in a particular way is just not biblical. Nor is this ridiculous show, like it's always grieved me and it's always disgusted me, what I've seen in counterfeit Christianity with people like, oh, reaching for heaven as though God's not here. But because the word talked about lifting hands in the Old Testament, I tried it. And guess what? It didn't make me closer to God, nor did I feel his confirmation about it. And now I understand why. God is not far from me. God is in my heart. And what he wants is for me to worship him in the truth and in the spirit he doesn't want me standing on the street corners or in counterfeit churches making a show 
and reaching out for him in some, I don't know, some other place out in the air, out in the ether. He's here. He's given me his Holy Spirit. What I need to do is get out of my head and into my heart and into my spirit that communicates with him and the heart where he's cleaning me up and where his spirit's been placed. That's what I need to be focused on. That's what all of us need to be focused on. And so this representation of reaching out for him somewhere is a lack of understanding. It makes it seem like he's somewhere outside of us. It makes it seem like he's flesh, like he's going to reach back out for us, like that painting of one hand reaching for another. That's not, that's not relationship with God. Get out of your flesh and reach for him in your heart. When you reach for God in your heart and with your heart, you will find him. He will reach back and you will know, not because his hand touched you, but because you will feel him in the spirit. Please discern this message with God.